Robert Leon Davis was a crooked cop. Just about every crime you could name, we did. Uh, and all the while, we were wearing a badge. You know, someone with a badge has a lot of power. He grew up a hard-headed child in the care of his Christian grandmother. She used Bible stories to teach him right from wrong. She said, one day you will remember, when I'm gone, you will remember the things I'm telling you now. He joined the New Orleans Police Department with good intentions and outstanding ability. I went on with, uh, you know, with good hopes and trying to, uh, as much as one man can, change the world. That was one of the few places that uh, espoused honor. And uh, I went on the force uh, with the intentions of being honorable. But his ideas about changing the world were challenged his first day on the job. The senior officer I'm riding with, 17 years of experience, just started stopping guys for no reason. Started searching guys for no reason. Started stopping vehicles for no reason. I mean, he was just doing crazy stuff. You know, he was doing everything that the academy said don't do. He filed a complaint with supervisors, but they convinced him to think twice before blowing the whistle on another officer. So at that very moment, I realized what I was getting involved in. I realized that this particular force I was on was corrupt, but I realized that uh, I had two choices to make. Either I get out of this, or either I join the club. And unfortunately, I joined the club. Everything Grandma told me is out the door now. Corruption is deep within me. I think at the rate I was going, I could have wound up killing somebody. Robert and his partners administered their own form of street justice. Bribe someone Monday, uh, you had sex with someone unwarranted Tuesday, you know, uh, you, you, you were transporting drugs Wednesday, you were protecting drug addicts Thursday. Well, even Internal Affairs has to make a move. Complaints against him piled up. Internal Affairs set up surveillance and caught Robert breaking the laws he was sworn to protect. I was looking at 30 years in Angola, and I had already had placed 27 people in the same prison. And the word had came down that once I was found guilty, that they would rape me and that they would kill me. So I knew that I was going to be dead within 24 hours of being placed in Angola. He decided to run away before he came to trial. While out on bail, he studied survival techniques and learned how to live in the wilderness. He made his way into Canada and lived as a fugitive. I can just run and stay in the woods and nobody would ever find me. So I made that decision. But sometime I would come out maybe to earn some money, uh, $20, $30, get some canned goods, and go back into the woods. I mean, it was the only place I really absolutely felt safe at. For 22 years, he crossed the U.S. and Canadian borders, using different names in different cities. He lived with the knowledge that he could be caught at any moment, and he blamed God for his circumstances. And how could there be a God? This God thing is, uh, it, it's, it's a charade. I mean, it can't, can't be true. And please, I mean, don't mention Jesus Christ. I really didn't, I had an affinity for disliking him, you know, because I was like, this guy is, a, you know, he's a, he's a farce. I, I became an atheist, you know, a hardcore atheist. After years of living on the run, his mind was a mess of emotions and regret. Robert thought of killing himself. For a stretch of two or three days, I was going between suicide and, and all kinds of feelings. It's just so many things started coming up. And I believe that uh, at that point, I just wanted to end it all. And I was prepared to end it all. I mean, I had a pistol with me, and, and, and I thought about it. Yet passages from the Bible his grandmother taught him came to mind. Robert decided to test God, and God answered. I kept testing him with many, many things. There was an old coffee can sitting out there, and I, I took a rock, and I placed it on top of an upside-down can. And I said, when I wake up in the morning, if that rock is underneath that can, that I believe you exist and I will turn myself in. And when I woke up, the rock was not on the can. I never had the courage to look underneath that can. When you really think you're dealing with the living God in person in the middle of the woods of Tennessee, that's a very, very scary feeling. And I instantly, instantly lost all atheistic viewpoints instantly just lost it and reached back out to where I was before with my grandmother. You know, visions of my grandmother and, and visions of Bible passages begin to come back in my head. And I, that very next day, surrendered uh, to law enforcement. But I had first surrendered to God. He went back to New Orleans a new man, ready to face the charges against him. I could not fathom a God that was telling me to surrender 
only to be surrendering to debt. It had to be surrendering to life. I did not know that the judge was gonna release me. I actually thought I would get the 30 years. She felt that I had served time and that she was gonna take a chance on me. She told me that, I'm gonna take a chance on you. Robert is a free man. He tells his story to police academy recruits and works to bring rogue cops to justice. I feel that my very reason for coming back out of the woods is to help people, at least assist one cop to not do what I did, and that it will cause a common citizen to report a cop that's bad. As he looks back on his 22 years on the run from God and the law, he now knows that he was never alone. God was there for me, and he's there for me now. I forgot God, and I hated him. But God didn't forget me. And as much as I hated him, he loved me.